Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and uh, in this video, and I just uh, wanted to do this video to try to help people uh, in determining how old a cuckoo clock is, and I'm no expert on uh, the age of a cuckoo clock, and uh and I tell people all the time that uh, sometimes, unless you got documents in hand, that, uh, or unless you know an expert, and my group expert on Black Forest Clocks is Ballantin Weber, but I just wanted to make this uh, video to give you some idea by looking at the movement and looking at certain things to determine how old a really clock really is. So kick back, grab something to drink, uh, grab something to eat, grab a cigarette, and hopefully you can learn something. I want to talk a little bit about how you could tell the difference in a uh, antique clock versus uh, um, vintage clock um, by the wood itself. On an antique clock, the deer ears, it's all carved out of one piece. On uh, regular clocks, uh, and I will show you in a second, the ears are carved separately and they're glued to the deer head. And the antique pendulums, they are more designed than modern pendulums. Here you have a pendulum bob that is got this threaded section on it. Uh, that's uh, and the way it connects to the uh, wire itself is different than most modern clocks. The carvings is more specific on an antique clock versus a vintage clock. When I say more specific, you know, this is a after the hunt hunter's cuckoo clock. You could see the rope that is around the rabbit's leg. And you can see the rope that is around the pheasant's leg. And again, this is my Albert Plea clock that was made in 1880. Uh, you could see every little bit, bit of detail on this clock and they did a lot of they took their time and gave you a lot of detail now there are reproduction clocks that have a lot of detail in them but they have a, a, a newer movement in them also the Regular 71 and regular 72 movements are designed for a huge clock like this. And here is a after the hunt hunter's musical cuckoo clock. And as you can see the deer head, the ear is where it has came off, it's flat across. Like I said, they carved the ears separately and they glue them to the head. As you can see, the rabbit is not as detailed and there is no rope on the leg where they would hang the, uh, the animals upside down and tie a rope to their legs. Here is a before the hunt eight day hunter's cuckoo clock. 
And it's called a before the hunt because the animals are alive and they're standing straight up and down uh, as if they're walking around on the earth. And as you can see, the pheasant is walking on a piece of wood and the rabbit is walking on a piece of ground. But even though the bag is pretty detailed and the horn is pretty detailed and it's a pretty detailed item, it is totally different from that antique clock. Here's my uh, father and son antique clock. And I want to show you the pendulum. As you can see, the pendulum is different from the pendulums of today. There's a slot in there that a, sometimes they use a screw and screw to the pendulum bob. But in this case, they didn't. But as you can see, the leaf is different. Where they attach it uh, to the uh, top of the stick is differently. And this is broke. This is also an antique, but there's this is a railroad uh, style cuckoo clock. And I'm probably going to make a bunch of people mad. Uh, but a lot of the antique clocks, and not all of them, but a lot of the antique clocks have, each number has got little bitty nails in them to hold them down. Um, I have a group member. Her fam, she's German, okay. Her family is is from Germany, and they're dirt poor farmers. And during the winter time, they would make cuckoo clocks, and they would southern engineer, is what we know it as, as a. a, a political name there are some other names out there that I won't mention but they would southern engineer um, parts to the clock they couldn't afford the glue to glue the numbers down so they would take material that they have around their farm and they would make little nails uh, yes there's ways of making glue one way is using bread to make glue, but because they're dirt poor farmers, they would rather eat eat their bread and uh, materials to make the bread than to make glue out of it. So uh, the richer clock makers, they could afford glue. And so I got to an argument and a discussion pertaining to this person posted history from her experience, from her mother's experience. Her father's name is Paul Warner. Her grandfather's name is Paul Warner. Her great-grandfather's name is Paul Warner. They were artists and uh, did... Uh, her great grandfather or grandfather one was an artist and uh, he would use his artistic talents to help make cuckoo clocks here's another one of my antique clocks as you can see the movement is penned in this is a Lear style movement and it was made um, around 1850 or thereabouts the paper is original the topper are trapezoid they're triangle in shape when I got the clock I had to redo the bellows my clock I chose to use Tyvex 
Um, here is the pendulum. A circled style metal pendulum that is threaded and this bolt goes down through the pendulum and that is uh, some type of metal also and there's a nut right here um, so the movements are a sure sign of how old they are they quit using pens in around 1900 or give or take um, are there movements out there with nuts on them versus pens uh, probably so but for the most part they went to nuts versus pens around 1900 and 1910 this is a thicker movement as you can see as uh, the uh, Lear style pendulum uh, sorry Lear style movement and so uh, let me turn this uh, uh, clock around so you can see the front Again, the, um, the numbers, each individual number is nailed on. They did make uh, vintage and modern movements with nailed on numbers. But the, the door itself, the cuckoo bird, it's got articulated wings. And there's that book that I pointed out that shows you the transformation of the uh, cuckoo bird. But I also told you that not all clockmakers made cuckoo birds with articulated wings. Beha um, didn't always make articulated wings in their birds. Also want to mention, this is a Papa Cuckoo Clock. As you can see, the movement itself looks very identical to a regular 25 movement, except for the lift arms are plastic. The bellows, they use some kind of rice paper or something to make the bellows. But because of bellows and Papa made Cuckoo Clocks, in the 1950s and 60s but with the bellows being a triangular in shape versus uh, this type of bellow on the older antique clocks there's a more defined sound than the modern clocks they do sell trapezoid or triangular uh, bellow tops for you to um, to utilize um, so but the antique clocks have tri uh, triangular trapezoid um, bellow tops and if I was to well I'll just go do it stand by I was thinking that this uh, Poller and Son um, bellows had uh, lead weights that were screwed on top of the, the bellows, but I pulled it down and I was wrong. But this is the uh, other clock that I was showing you. The bird has articulated wings. There are nuts on this. Um, this shows DRGM on it. I'm going to look on my um, um, information and see if I have a, a plate ID here. Uh, but um, I'm not for sure exactly who made this. 
um, the bellows. Need fixed, but uh, they are trapezoid bellows. Do you see how this door goes onto this clock? There's some space. It's an older style clock, but with it having that DRGM um, on there, I, it's from the 1950s. This clock right here, and that's because the DRGM is a uh, a patent number type thing. This is a clock with a DRGM on the movement. Um, I'm going to have to do some research. Um, it might have been made by uh, somebody. Um, DRGM um, is typically a patent number but there's no number on it since it has just drgm i think that's uh makers and i'm going to do some research this is what the uh Mikrolis database says for drgm but there's no circle and uh so I'm going to ask my Black Forest Group expert, Valentin Weber, about that clock. But as you can see with modern or vintage clocks, sorry, they don't have nails and the numbers. Now, it's this Meckenbecker made in the 60s. But the antique clocks have nails and the numbers. Now, this is a Popo clock made in the 50s and 60s, and it has a Brad and each and every number. Uh, and this is a calendar clock, and it does work. And the ear came off, and I gotta find the stupid ear. But anyway, there's. I'm not an expert on the history, and that's why I have a, a group expert uh, to help me out when I am um, guessing on an age, I, I would say. Uh, but there are some things that are specific. And like I said, some of the modern day clocks are replicas of an antique clock. And uh, they will fool you until you look at the movement. And then the movements, um, or regular, or Herbert Her, well, not really Herbert Her anymore. They went out of business a couple years ago. But the movements are not antique movements. So. What I'm getting at is always ask a seller to see the movement. Because to me, an antique clock, the movement is what sells me the clock. If you take an antique clock like this or this, and it has a modern movement in, I'll walk away from it. I don't want it. The movement to me sells the clock and speaking of movements this is that George Cool uh, cuckoo coil clock I thought it was this movement like I said I got I've got over a hundred cuckoo clocks it's kind of hard to keep up with but I have a clock that the movement was designed so you can work on half of it and then work on the other half in other words there's a split right down the middle of the movement so you can take one half of the plate off and i thought it was this george cole clock but 
I, I'm wrong. Um, and it was designed that way. And I personally love it because you can work on half of a movement at a time. And I wish they were all designed that way. Because when you start getting this many gears in a train or in a movement, it's kind of hard to work on um, to, uh, to get everything set up just right. This clock right here is one of those clocks that is a modern clock that has this uh, Regula 702, sorry, 72 movement in it. And as you can see, the clock is very detailed. Uh, 72 is for a musical, uh, sorry, the 72 is for an eight day cuckoo clock. A 71 is for a one day cuckoo clock. But as you can see, that is a very huge clock and it's a very expensive clock and it belongs to Sean Baker, which is one of my group members. This is for the um, for the Fox and Grapes Cuckoo Clock that I showed you in another, another video and it's a regular 701 movement and I believe it's a one day movement and I believe it's the prerequisite to the regular 71 movement as you can see the the arms sorry I'm having video issues here because I got too many cables in the way as you can see the arms for the guy and for the bird is longer and so it was designed for a bigger clock just like the regular 72 was designed for a clock that huge and here I just want to show you um, here on uh, a quick search on the internet uh, some antique clocks Again, you could uh, tell uh, by the carvings and how detailed they are. But this is not an antique clock. This is a modern clock. But you see the details and the carvings. But you see the price. Eleven thousand um, dollars. Here's another antique clock. We'll just pull up. You see the details in the carvings? This has got bone hands on it. And that's what they originally used was bone hands. You see the pendulum in the background? It's just like the other pendulum I was showing you earlier on my uh, Alexander Plague. But this looks like a cuckoo quail clock. Uh, 
is a shield clock. I was looking for a specific clock. Uh, a clock maker. Uh, there's a specific clock maker out there, and I, I'm having trouble remembering his name. But they use the symbol of a rabbit. Uh, I want to say it's PBS or I, my mind is drawn a blank, but the the details in the carvings is one of the things that you want to look at is how detailed is it. But we can sit here and search for clocks all day long. But, uh, you know, I was telling you that the Alexander Fleeg uses a house um, and some of their movements. Um, uh, um, Shots uses a bird as a silhouette and some of their uh, rear movement plates. Uh, with this particular maker and I can't I can't think of it uses a rabbit um, and you know it's that maker by this rabbit on it and so looking at the movement looking at the details in the clock looking at the pendulum you know there's um Lots of things to look at, but the uh, uh, the the overall study in the clock to determine how old it is, because you know way back then when they were making the clocks, a lot of them took a lot of time and giving lots of detail but like I said you can find modern clocks with that detail also so in with modern clocks you have to um, uh, pay attention to the to the movement here's a video of a five foot hunter cuckoo clock Circa 1890. Very similar to, review of a to my clock. Forest, uh, Hunter's Cuckoo Clock. This clock was carved in the Black Forest region of Germany about 1890 to 1910. I don't want to um, uh, violate any copyright rules, so I'm not going to play the entire video. And you could see the hands, their bone hands. Nice original wood cuckoo bird with articulated wings. Retains its original paint. Loops around the horn. Very similar to my Alexander Fleeg cuckoo clock, which was made around 1880. But because uh, I have group members who are a lot smarter than I am, um, Frank Snyder is one of my group members who um, repairs trumpeter clocks. Philip Pass, it's, it's made by Philip Pass, the Georgian Black Forest Movement, has the brass running rabbit on the escapement bridge. And that's how you tell it's a Philip Pass uh, cuckoo clock. Now here's a running rabbit, um, also, and it's made by August Pollen, 
but they made pocket watches movements. Here's one of the Philip Haas and Son uh, clocks. If I can get this thing to uh, load. As you can see, there's a lot of detail in it. I'm going to see if I can find one with the movement. The one I was asking Frank about was on this website, and it sold for $282.01. But there's no longer a picture because this website, after a certain period of time, uh, deletes all their pictures. And here's uh, Philip Haas and Son um, symbol, the running rabbit. And you can buy it now for $19.99. It's on eBay. And here's a, a NAWCC listing where somebody bought this movement for $20. They got a heck of a deal. But it's a Philip Haas and Son movement and see if we can uh click in the pictures to find the rabbit And there's the rabbit right there that Philip Haas and Son uses to symbolize that this is their movement. Very sought after uh, clocks. Um, I That's one of the uh, clocks that I was trying to remember in a previous video on the history of clocks. Anyway, uh, I want you to stay tuned for the next video. In the next video, we're going to talk about putting a clock in warning. I touched bases with it in a previous video, but I've had a few questions. I wanted to make its own separate video. So stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the notification button. And stay tuned uh, because together uh, we're learning things. May God bless each and every one of you.